Well, welcome to Staying Connected this Friday, the 1st of October, as we come to you from Holy Trinity Cathedral in Parnell in Auckland. I'm the Very Reverend Anne Mills, and I'm the Dean here at Holy Trinity Cathedral. This Sunday, as we gather, again it will be virtually, um, we will also be, we will not only be celebrating the season of creation, but in our liturgical calendar this weekend, we remember St Francis of Assisi. St Francis of Assisi is one of the saints that is close to my heart, as we have for many, many years, probably 40 uh, more and more years than that, been very involved with the, uh, the friars, the Franciscan friars, and early in the early days, the Franciscan sisters, who had communities here in New Zealand, and many of you will also remember fondly uh, the Franciscan communities that have been present uh, in New Zealand for many, many years. I was privileged uh, also to be able to visit Assisi and uh, to spend some days there and visited many of the sites uh, that St Francis uh, also was part of. And so it is with much fondness that this Sunday we remember uh, the Feast of St Francis. I've got a little story to tell you that uh, quite appeals to me. There are many stories written about uh, St Francis, and this one is probably one of the most intriguing stories about him, which in all likelihood is not pure legend. Uh, it places him in the woods that once surrounded the little church of the Poison Collar. Returning from prayer, he is met at the edge of the forest by his companion, Brother Massio, who seeks to discover how humble Francis really is. Teasingly, he cries out to him, Why after you? Why after you? Why after you? A bit bewildered, Francis answers, What are you trying to say? What do you mean? This, Massio replies, Why does all the world seem to be running after you and wanting to see you and hear you and obey you? You're not a very handsome man. You don't have great learning or wisdom. You're not of noble blood. So why is it that all the world is coming to you? Caught up in God, Francis eventually answers Massio. You want to know why after me? Why? Well, because God did not find a greater sinner than me, or one more simple and foolish. And so he chose me because he has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise, and the base things of the world to bring to naught the noble and great and strong. Small wonder then that Brother Massio was deeply moved by such an answer, and was thus reassured that St Francis was grounded in genuine humility, and was in very truth the lowly disciple of Christ. many stories and legends about St Francis, but once we put aside these legendary narratives, the life of Francis, I believe, will still stand an example of faith of the faithful following of Christ through life's tough decisions, misunderstandings, obedience and humility. Service to those in need, dialogue between religions and perseverance. It is right to conclude our season of creation on the day of this saint, not just because of the narrative and legend attached to it, but foremost as his example shows us that faith lived in fullness will urge us to be passionate and caring for the world around us. Many thousands of people of all walks of life followed Francis's example. And as I mentioned at the beginning, the Society of St. Francis is one of those uh, groups that was set up to follow Francis. The Society of St. Francis continues uh, its mission throughout the Anglican Communion. And though they're not present anymore in Aotearoa, New Zealand, 
They are flourishing in the Anglican Church in Melanesia and are present in various provinces of Asia Pacific, the UK and the USA. And so as we remember St Francis and rejoice with him in celebration of the care of God's world, may we find ways to allow may we find ways to always point to Christ and dwell in the divine presence that surrounds us. I also uh, want to share with you before I finish today the sobering reality that the impact of this extended lockdown on gathering limits, event loss and cash deficits means for our cash resources here at the Cathedral. These continue to be extremely fragile. With staff wages being our biggest single expense, the staff are working on reduced hours. The Cathedral Council and the Cathedral Resources Board are working tirelessly to make sure every possible saving is made so that we can at least continue to pay our fixed costs. This is a difficult time. It's a difficult time for all of us, particularly for our staff. And it's not a place that any of us would want or wish to be. And unfortunately, it's our current reality. And as long as we are in restricted gathering numbers in level three and two, uh, this will continue to cause us some angst. So continue to hold us in your prayers, those in the Cathedral Council and the Cathedral Resources Board who are working extremely hard to make our ends meet for the Cathedral. Meanwhile, we wait to see what the government announcement on Monday afternoon will mean for us. However, we will not be gathering in person before there is a 100 person limit. Online or streamed services will continue until level one. Next week, our virtual offerings will re remain the same as they have been for the last number of weeks, with evening prayer on Tuesday and Thursday evenings, Ministry of the Word with Spiritual Communion on Sunday morning, and staying connected on Friday. We will, of course, reassess our position during next week and communicate any changes to you. If there is anything that you uh, want or need of uh, us here at the Cathedral, please don't hesitate to contact Reverend Avetza or myself, and we would be only too happy to have a chat or to respond uh, to anything that you need us uh, to do. And so until we meet next week, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and bring you peace this day and always. Amen.